Okay, let's begin. Okay, so a prayer. Robert, thank you for bringing us together to explore the work of your passionate artists, those people who love you and follow you and put their, their love into works of paint and, and uh, photography and things like that. Help us to really pay attention to those qualities around us that draw us closer to you, whether it's a sunset or a painting or a photo. Use them as conduits to be in your heart of love and beauty. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> okay, so today our, in our uh, last session, unless you guys want to do more, but uh, the last session we had planned, we thought we would move to contemporary art. And so we're looking today at um, artists and images that were chosen by each of your presenters. And we're gonna start with this one that Holly has chosen. Um, let me make this small so you can see. Can I turn off the overhead lights, everybody? Yeah, yeah. good idea, yeah, okay. So this is the Annunciation by Henry Asawa Turner. And I'll let you talk about it. Mm -hmm. well, um, Lori and I were discussing it. Wait a second. Why am I not getting? Are you um? Are you spotlighting? You know it or I no, I am sharing. Because it's sharing. showing up. I just don't think it's on the main screen for everybody. They have to click the thing. Oh, okay. Wait a second. Let's get it on the main screen. Unless, I mean, unless I have it switched, I can't always tell. Like, oh, there we go. But yeah, I guess we can ask him. Yeah. So, is everybody seeing that image? Yeah, we can see it. Great. Okay. Okay. Good. okay so this is Henry Asawa Tanner, and he was one, or some people say, the first prominent African American artist to make an internet, to have international claim. And he studied at the Fine Art School of Fine Arts in Philadelphia with Thomas Eakins, who's a famous surrealist artist from the um, 19th century. And um, he went to Paris, studied there for a while, and he also took a trip to the Middle East for about six weeks. And that's when he started to paint religious paintings or that kind of, um, we visited the Holy Land. I think he was, um, um, I guess, a divine um, awareness of, of in art. Um, so this is the Annunciation, and this is one of my favorite. And Lori and I both wanted to do it, so I'm going to let her chime in too. Um, I just love the detail in this, and it is, he did paint it after the Middle East, so you can notice that with the rug. And uh, there's some pottery on the shelf there. Um, and I just love the depiction of the angel, I mean, or the man, you know, the kind of surreal picture of the angel. So with that, I'll just let everybody discuss this. And Lori, do you have any more questions? One of the things that I really love about this image is how, she is how Mary is, you know. So she's sitting there, her hands are kind of clasped, and she's got that typical adolescent pose, you know, that's her. But she's there, she's staying there. They're totally dubious. Yeah, yeah, yep. But she's but she stays. It's not like she's running off. Oh, she's like, what? You know, I just love that. It's such a wonderful image of Mary of the, the young Mary. And so contemporary, I mean, that for me, that's one of the things that really marks this as a contemporary painting because it, it shows the emotion of this very real youngster. I love the, um, the drape of her robe and blankets, the way that all spills over the bed, it's, um, I, I just want to touch that blanket, it's so soft. It's 
probably not. It was wool, but you know. <laughs> the blue, the reds, the tans, the orange, it's all the colors are fabulous. And then with the illusion of the angel. So that's that's just terrific. I've never seen that. Never saw that painting. I love the rug, the way it's messed up. It's like home. <laughs> For old <laughs> triple. <laughs> Is the date 1880? Yeah, 1898. So, 1888. Yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't stay within 100 years. Pretty close. Pretty good. Yeah. Did you go there specifically to paint what, the Holy Land? To the Holy Land? I, you know, I don't know. I think he went to visit, and they just, just went, went and then just back in Paris, and I think he. Did. Came back to the U.S. too. Well, they wow. died in the U.S., but mm -hmm. I'm sure he's gone. But I the trip to the Middle East, East changed his whole life. What else do you notice in the painting? Well, well, the setting is very real in in the Middle East. <clears throat> One description that I've seen this with the study thing before that if you really kind of squint, the light on the on the left is almost in the form of a cross. Yes. I think that's reading into it. Yeah. Myself. No, no, there's a shelf there. There's and a shelf. Is, yeah. And if you, you could, yeah, I couldn't find a detail of this, but <clears throat> I don't know. Well, it shows up on the slide right there. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's amazing how with paint that you can create light mm -hmm. like yes. that. Mm -hmm. um, it, it looks like you know, almost like a squint. Yeah. When you look right mm -hmm. at it, it's like, yeah. Yeah, and it lights up her what the one side of her face. Bad. Creates a very dark shadow behind her. <clears throat> so yes. another thing that I love in looking at this painting is imagining being with that angel. What that would be like. <clears throat> well, slipping into that space. What would that be like? Is the Annunciation, does she say I cover my face or is that somebody else that covers their face? In the somebody face else. In yeah. front of an angel, yeah. okay. But good. She just says, let it be unto me according to your word. Let it be done to me. That's right. Well, it's an apparition. It's, you know, it's, a, it could, it's a ghost. Zoom. How about you folks on Zoom? Any any comments from you all? Anything that sticks out? Can y'all hear me? This is Amy. Yes. Hi, friends. Um, having looked at Mary for several weeks now together, I'm struck by the colors. You know, Mary is often wearing the blue, sometimes the red. And so we have the red of the passion behind her that kind of prefigures what's to come. And then the blue of her as queen of heaven, but yet she's still in this moment before all of that. She's in her, um, her maiden face before everything, you know, has happened. And I think the way that Tanner chooses to do that really simply in a way that still feels um, appropriate for this very, to me, Middle Eastern setting. It feels to me like the places I've visited, I can feel the dryness in the air. Um, but he just adds these dashes of color to let us remember, to remind us what's to come, that in her yes, uh, there is all of this um, passion and pain, and ultimately um, her space as queen of heaven.
Beautiful. Also interesting, the setting, there are two pieces of pottery mm -hmm. in there. One up on the shelf and one on the floor. And then four up. Yeah, so what what do you think that symbolizes? What is the artist trying to say by having two pieces of pottery on the left there? One below and one above. There's a lot of imagery of women at the well uh, in the Bible, women collecting water. And, and it's an amphora, which would carry wine. And so the Lord changed water into wine in the first miracle. Good point. Yeah. I think it speaks to her hesitancy. Her hesitancy? Yeah. Why? What's going on? Where is this painting located? You know, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know either. I've only seen it online. So, you know, wait, go it was. Yeah, I don't know. I'll have to get that information. Yeah, I get that. Probably. Yeah, I have something esoteric on the, the um, cheat or the, the round or the blanket that's behind her. It reminds me of Mark Rothko paintings, too, with the holy blocks. And, um, which and he was an abstract expression expressionist. I was a supreme colorist. If you probably seen his stuff, the views mm -hmm. of color, and that that kind of reminded me of it too. Um, um, and that's, I guess I said it was kind of esoteric, but that's one reason I kind of like it. It kind of brought together her experience and my love of art. It's at it's at the. Uh... Super Bowl champion Philadelphia. Philadelphia, okay. Well, that's where he <laughs> studied for many years. Yeah, so right. Academy of so music. he must have given it to him. <laughs> hey, this is this Raven? Um, yeah, I'm just seeing like all of these um, foreshadowings yeah. throughout throughout it. So you got the. The image that's almost like a cross that somebody mentioned, and then, you know, the wine to water jugs, and then, you know, the red to blue, like Amy was talking about, really speaks to me. Like you have the blue kind of present there, it's coming in red. And then also, I noticed if you look at the blanket, um, the, the one in the middle, the shape there is very, uh, it looks like the um, Pieta. Uh -huh. Looks like what? Whoa, the Pieta. images from the Pieta, which is where Whoa. Jesus is, is dying or dead in Mary's lap. Oh, that gives me shivers. Yeah, it's the whole that's got the whole uh, movement and kind of the shape there. Oh wow! The one good thing about, it, especially religious art, it evokes so much, and and yet the painter may have just been painting, and you know people see stuff in it that even the painter, he or she might not have even planned, because it is very evocative. You guess though. Well, yeah, you're right. A lot of things may be intentional. Sure, you don't know. We don't know, may not. Yeah. You know, the, the rug forms across too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the rug is on this side. Oh, yeah, right. Anything else? All right, let's go on to the next. We'll skip that one for a minute and go to this. There. Which is, this is a uh, Chinese contemporary painter. This is from about 2000. And um, the reason that I like it is because it's, it combines the, some of the traditional symbolism of Annunciation art with 
this very oriental outlook in the, in the image. And so I thought it would be fun to, to ponder for a bit. So here you see Mary has a flute instead of a book. Oftentimes in the, the Annunciation images, she'll have a book, something that she's holding and reading. But here she's got a flute. And uh, you've got the Holy Spirit still. And you've got the lilies still. Um, the, the angel is looking at her through a round instead of some kind of rectangle. Almost like the angel is telling her something, <laughs> using her finger, making emphasis. Definitely making emphasis. Yeah, for sure. And the fence, why the fence? The I don't know. Somewhere. Mm -hmm. Trying to get in. I like the candy. I admit, yes, do it. Yeah. Thank you. Was she there long? I hope not. What else? What do you see? What what resonates in you? What comes up as you look at this? Well, the angel has one way. The other one's behind his feet, though. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I wonder uh, about the light, uh, the <clears throat> different colors of the light. Mm -hmm. No, behind the mirror. And what does that stand for? The light of the world? Um, yeah, the candle. The way, I don't know um, the artist's intent. Some of the ways that I thought of it is um, that again, you have the blue of Mary and the red, but also um, it seems like there's there are two sets of illuminations here that are offsetting each other. And one is that candle, which seems like a very human kind of illumination. And the other is the, the window to the Holy Spirit, or the angel, that um, intrusion of the holy into ordinary life. So that's kind of what I thought about it, but I don't know what the artist would think. The modernity of it is striking to me. And the, the dove, the spirit, Holy Spirit, is not hovering like most of our pictures of the hovering dove. It's be lighting it right in towards Mary. Or he's flying straight in. He's that dove is just moving in. Just like her finger. Yeah, like her finger. And the yeah. fence, she is entering the real world. I love the fence because it's a wooden, it looks like it's a wooden picket fence of some sort. Yeah. It's, it's cool. It is, yeah. Yeah. I like that very much. Yeah, it's like it's a it's a barrier, but only partially so. Something that can be leaned on and looked over. And being left-handed, the angels look like left-handed, pointing. Pointing. It's interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I like the green sky because it it's showing that the dove and the angel are not from earth there it's you know it's green it's from not of this earth it's from heaven yeah <laughs> why why is mary uh, uh, using a flute that's a i think that's the uh, uh chinese thing that's the the influence of a different culture, something that a woman of that culture would be doing in her leisure time. In a rural area, especially, they'd be shepherdesses. They would be uh, playing a flute. That would, that's how they, in, in all the Orient, uh, the parties, a lot of flute playing. Mm. 
and that would be the way that she would respond right to, like the magnificat that she was oh, singing yeah. she would play uh -huh. So you think about contrasting that with our, our very word orientation in this culture. And it's kind of a nice contrast to think, to think of this more lyric response. That's like the, the stylized shapes of the faces. Yes. <laughs> and then particularly the prominence of the nose and the eyes. <laughs> The angel's nose just seems to go right straight up. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it has that, it has kind of an icon feeling as well. One of the reasons I don't think it should. But it also emphasizes the Asianness of the character because the Asians always discuss the big noses of the West. <laughs> 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 that this is, you know. <laughs> How about uh, anybody else on Zoom? Any other comments? Anything you notice? Yeah, I was I was struck by the. Um, it seems like the the kind of trin Trinity references. So the three flowers, and then the three living beings up top there, and then uh, just kind of like that. That was, you know, we're talking about kind of. Union, and I know that's always, you know, it always it, it does seem to be associated with the idea of Mary a lot of times, as well as as Jesus, like the the you know the trifold nature of 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 God. And then the other thing that really struck me, it was just kind of odd, is that if you look at the image as a whole, like the angel's eye and Mary's eye look like uh, one face. Okay. <laughs> it's almost like they have sunglasses. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Amy, were you going to say something? I didn't know if you were. Yeah, just to add something real quick. I. I'm um, resonating with what you said, Lori, about it being almost like an icon. I'm struck by. Um, it's so densely packed, but so kind of stylized and every single thing is absolutely essential, right? Um, it feels, it feels really potent, just like that moment, right? I can't, I can't get away into some landscape. My eye doesn't go anywhere else. Everything I look at brings me back into this very tight square and, um, really makes me feel something about that moment, how tight and um, potent it was. I thought of the flower, the particular kind of flower, the, the lily, right? Yeah, Easter. Easter, yeah, resurrection. Yeah, the fragrance, the fragrance of the lily is so pungent. Yeah. Oh yeah. Did everybody hear that? The <coughs> no, the, um, which is pointing to the lily and saying that uh, odor is very pungent. It brings in the whole factory. It's linked with the resurrection. So that's also part of the image. The thing that I noticed, the necks are very long, both of them. And then there's a like a shadow under the chin. Mm -hmm. it, it's not really a shadow. It's five o'clock shadow. Oh, that would, that, no, that's not. Yeah. That's interesting. <coughs> if you, you know, compare, so I'm looking at the sun now. So on the screen, compare my face to the angel's face and see where the shadows are on mine. Yeah. And they're, they're pretty similar. Yeah. It's almost got a cartoon uh, focus of it. It's, 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 it's iconic, but it's modern. It's almost cartoonish, but it's very, very impactful. I think all of, if you look at all the symbols. And the wings are awfully small. The wings. Mm -hmm. 
And unless the angel was of no substance, of little substance. Yeah. Yeah. But look what a bumblebee can do with a little bee. <laughs> Well, artist, folks, what does it mean exactly? I have an idea, but to say something is stylized. It means that it's um, rather than being sort of a realistic, um, what would you say, looser depiction, that it, it has a, a form to it. Not cartoonish, but it's simplified to the point where it's not. Real, as realistic. There's distinct outlines around everything. Yeah. Like and also, just the things you emphasize, like this one, the eye on each of the nodes are both in the sky. I think if you got other artwork by the artist, Hitchi, you would do the same thing. I bet they were all. Yes, the they are all yeah. the same. Yeah. And, that's and they're, stylized, they're right? really cool, so, too. They're just the amazing images because again of that combination of what's so familiar to us with what is um, his own interpretation because of his culture. And they're all religious, Christian? Yeah, they're all Christian. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. So Google them and see because what's the woman's right hand doing? Playing the flute. Oh, so but I mean it looks like she's got her, it has her little fingers. Her little fingers okay. up, yeah. So she's got all the notes except for that one covered. So Webster's Dictionary says um, style stylizing is to represent a design according to a style or pattern rather than according to nature or tradition. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at, got a quick grab one of Amy's before she gets called away. So. Amy, tell us about this one. This was created in 1999 as an entry into a competition. The competition um, was held by the, the National Catholic Reporter. And the competition was, the, the request was to create images of Christ for the millennium, for 2000. So Janet McKenzie made this image. Uh, which she called Jesus of the People. Um, it won the, the competition, and she immediately got a lot of responses, many of which at the beginning were very negative. She had um, death threats, actually, when people saw this image and her representation of Jesus. Um, I don't want to say too much more before, you know, I want to, I want to hear how you relate to it. The only thing I will say is that she used as her model a black woman. And um, yeah, this is widely available. It's on cards everywhere you can buy. Um, you can buy prints of it. And now a lot of the negative responses has kind of quieted and multitudes of people have talked about how finally they could see Jesus as uh, related to themselves. They could see themselves in an image of Jesus. So mm -hmm. that's all I'll say to begin and we can just um, spend some time with the image. There, so what do you see everybody? What, what's... Um... references to other cultures, the yin and yang and other. The race, she says. It's wonderful. Yeah, the Kirk Elf, I think. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. It has a rose background. It is basically black and white. And yeah, it's pretty true to color, um, you know, because it's a print, it's been, I've seen it in various gradations, but yeah. The thing that draws me in first 
is the is his faith that um, stillness and yet it's got an element of sorrow to it that draws me in um, kind of a here I am but it's hard being here is the feeling I get well he looks so young Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who's the artist? Mackenzie? Mackenzie, yeah. Janet Mackenzie. John, what's the disc of? It's a uh, yin and a yang. The yin and the yang. Okay. So the Tao is. Yeah, the Tao. They both have a cross. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He has a face and a look like a, she painted him from a. Basketball court in the inner city. He was he was playing basketball. He looks like a, a young guy in a, in a city guy. But it's a woman. It's a woman. So I think that's the androgynous. What's well, not Jesus? Jesus is a woman. Well, but I see the I see the basketball playing youth in it too. Yeah, it was androgynous. But it looks very androgynous. Yeah, you can have a black basketball playing. Jesus. Yeah. When was it painted? For a 2000. Amy, tell us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's interesting the controversy that it's created. I, I think of the, the Western Christian Christianity's image of Jesus, the typical portrait, very lily white. And if you've been to the Middle East, it's anything but. So we've had this false image of Christ for so many generations. The, the contrast between the black and the white. Mm. Um, <clears throat> truth. What would the contracts contrast be? And we had that in the scripture today. I mean, he, you, he is holding that, holding the black and the white. Yeah. Already has the crown of thorns. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't look quite so thorny as a lot of crowns. <laughs> I'm really struck by the eyes. Mm. Just pull, <laughs> they pull me in and in. You know, it's it's this feeling for me. It's this feeling of uh, like seeing so much. Like you know, not just seeing like. At first, I was kind of feeling like, no, like beyond, uh, you know, looking beyond what's there. But the more I look at it, the more it's like just like including so much, you know, um, of the vision of both what's being seen and, and also like the context of everything. I don't know. They just seem, the eyes really uh, make me feel like there's a, there's a lot being seen. <laughs> And a lot of wisdom behind this. I'm looking right at you. Looking right at us, right? Yeah. yeah. You can see through us. <laughs> I see. I see somebody who is sometimes a rare kind of person who looks very, very kind, but also like they wouldn't take any take anything from you, you know? Take any like they would stand up for whatever they had to stand up for. And, like, so, you know, they'll and respond to you kind of accordingly, you know, if you're good intentions, like they'll be very kind. But if you, you won't put up with. Not a church. Anyone the way, but not yeah, a church. Be, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it's self assurance. Yeah, that's kind of. Yeah. Kind of what I mean. But yeah, yeah, that's neat. I like that idea of not being able to put one over on him, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, street Jesus. Street Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Street, yeah. street Jesus. 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 Yeah. Street Jesus
like well they said not a church he can yeah. yeah. gotta get rid of them. That's cool. Yeah. I also I really like the the clutching. Yeah. <laughs> like a protecting of the heart. Not so, tight. Not real tight. No. But it has got a good handful of that. What is that around the neck? Is it a scarf or is it? <coughs> Part of his, it looks like his undergarment is also dark. And it's white coat. But what's the, the scarf? The, um, the whatever it is around his neck first made me think of um, other portraits of Jesus with a lamb. Carrying a lamb on his shoulder. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I saw this many years ago. I've had it on my altar for a long time. I'm changing it out. And I found it welcoming. I was like, at last, there's, there's an image that feels real. I love these songs. The welcoming image lasts something that feels real. This is the antithesis of stylized. You know, the Mary Magdalene, Mary, it's the same word. This, this is the Did you have anything else to share with us about it? Lori, were you talking to me? Yeah. Do you have anything else that you wanted to share with us about the image? Um, uh, no, just what I what I shared, I really want to, to lift up. She's still today, so 20 years, 23 years later, she's still getting letters from people who are finding this image and saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. This changed my life. And I think so much of what I've heard from you all is is true for me too. There's a way that I can look at all of those beautiful Renaissance images of Jesus that are, you know, light skinned and it's it's though he's kind of above the nitty gritty of the the what really happened here, you know? And I feel distanced from that Jesus, almost like I don't need to follow him because all I feel from him is this divinity, not the humanity, right? So which it's sort of my out, like, oh, it's for Jesus to do, right? Uh, not me, but with this image, no, I'm called in rather. Um, and same thing, he's not, like you said, the Lori, the clutching, he's not blessing us like in so many of those images, right? He's he's clutching and that pulls me into to this real, very real human of his experiences. And um, just one last thing, I forgot the our guest name during your um, queer theology series, it wasn't Austin, was the other person at, who talked to us about how um, Jesus would have only had X chromosome. Do you remember? I do, yes. yeah. Right, and I thought, I, I thought of this image, I, because people were so furious, not only that, that she used a black model, but that it was a woman. But I thought, huh, well, uh, if we take that to heart, that the only human chromosomes in that body were, were female, were X, um, that's perfect. Yeah, I'm no kidding. <laughs> but you can look at the face and still see a man's face. That's what I I sort of thought it was and was surprised when it said the model was a woman. <clears throat> Is that a black feather on the cross on the right? So yeah, the, a Native American spiritual symbol on the wing. <laughs> and Asian symbol with the Tao. Right. <clears throat> All right, well, let's look at another one. We'll go back to the, and then the second annunciation. This one is, is Holly's. Yeah, 
So do you want to tell us about yeah, this? This is Frank Wesley, and I didn't know much about him, but I happened to find this print. A lot of it's copyrighted, so I'm glad you had the art in the Christian tradition of Vanderbilt. You introduced me to that, the library of paintings. He was um, Indian, grew up in Del um, Delphi, Northern India, um, and he went to the school there and studied there and taught there. And then he went to Japan and studied uh, woodblock printing and taught um, at one of the universities there. And then he was also at the Chicago Institute of Art. So he's had great exposure to a lot of different cultures. And he uh, married an Australian nurse that was working in India at one point after he returned, I think from the US. And he lived for 30 years in Queensland in Australia. And, um, and that's where he, he died. So he's been exposed to a lot of cultures and I feel like that's all incorporated in here a little bit. Um, again, I think he was a supreme colorist and I'm trying to think, I'm not quite sure what the medium is. Probably oil. I'm not sure if it could be water. I don't know if that I think is. It's watercolor. If you think it's watercolor. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, at least from this image. Um, and of course, I love the depiction of the angel sitting downward. So, anyway, that's great. I'd love for you to hear some of your comments. What is the title of this? Annunciation. We kind of kept drawing back on that theme so you could compare all the yeah, time. Yeah, we styles and approaches. You explain the like angel. this, yeah. So here's the head and yeah. arm. It's oh, reaching oh, out. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah the arm diving. is outlined. So oh. she's coming down like that. That's an arm. That's the baby. <laughs> Oh, yeah. This is, yeah. this is her, her hair. hair. That's her hair face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It looks like a child yeah. like a baby was being born. Oh, yeah. yes. That's what I like. Well, yeah. 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 Oh, she's turned back here. It looks yeah. like yeah. Yeah. birth. Yeah, yeah. It's like she's <laughs> well, what are the what are the green green feathers? I thought maybe there were her oh, wings, her depiction of wings. There's a palm tree. Oh, do you see the face? Yeah, it would be a palm tree. I, I, see, see, the I see a black foot. <laughs> oh, you mean behind? Yeah. Or a black sock. <laughs> that could be. Oh, no. I see a green and blue. It's a shadow. Shadow of the angel. Okay. No. <laughs> But the so the three fronds should also be Trinity, the living, breathing Trinity that's being evoked. Because you notice there's no there's no dove in this one. So perhaps that's the in, instead of the dove, you have the, the three green fronds. So the one's the one above it, separate. This one? The one, the fourth one. Oh, yeah. And it's the gentleman. I think that's the other one. 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 Barriers in your middle. Yeah, I don't know where I'm always at the bottom. Yeah, you can't see that. Okay. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Yeah, it helps if you get a postman. What's the what's the uh, vertical stripe, red stripe up in the upper right hand corner? Looks like a, a handlebar. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know. I don't know. It looks like two chalk marks. Yeah. It doesn't look like water. It is interesting. Um, well, you see all these birds in the tank of life. No, I think it's water, at least the grass. The blending of the blue sides. Yeah. Yeah. 
I really love the flow of this one um, because like the the movement in the image is all from Mary kind of through the angel and then up back into where the angel is coming from. Like all, all of the strokes take you up. Mm -hmm. um, back up to, back it's to God. Tree. Yeah, and touching her on the foot. Yeah, I, I agree, Raymond. The, the flow of this one is really, really lovely. Yep. Yeah. Maybe yeah. part of the Yeah, the angel is. But it, it, it still looks incomplete to me. Side to side. It takes too much work to find it. <laughs> to, to find the face, the angel's face and the hand. Yeah. Well, Mary has oh, a right good nail polish. polish. And we her fingernails are pointed. There's no one really seems to know. Again, that different culture. culture yeah. yeah, indicated by that yeah. detail. Oh. And the earrings yeah. and the style of her dress. But yeah, like Holly says, there's still the the blue and red. red. Well, it, it's, it's, you have to get up here so close because she's she's laying her head on her hand. And I when I first saw it, I thought it looked like a cat up here. Uh, sort of. Anyway. Yeah. You have to get up there. You have to get, you have to get a lot of detailing on that one. It's, I think we read into it to see the Trinity and all of that. I don't get it. You don't? That's, yeah, that's just a wild guess on my part. It probably has nothing to do with what the artist intended. You know. Is it a flower box in the lower left that I can? Are these plants just emerging? Well, that's what I'd love to see. Yeah. yeah. The, the other part that intrigues me is though, she's got her hand on what looks like a table. But then if you look at the left side of the table, it just swoops up. Mm -hmm. So it's not really a table. No, it's a floor. It's a floor. It's a floor. It's foliage. It is, I think, a bush in the background. Oh, and it yeah, appears to me like this is the shutter of a window or something. Okay. And and as I say, it this is the ground and yeah. the plants. So I hear a sort of a raisin. A raisin. A raisin. A raisin. A raisin. <laughs> so you have this Mary who's very contained, you know, yeah. it's just. just like a little egg almost, you know, very um, closed in. And the angel, the only thing the angel can touch on her is her foot. Think about the times you felt like that. You know, when it's just like, don't touch me, go away. Or when it's yeah. like, I don't want any, I don't want any. Yeah. Kind of hungered in, yeah. Yeah. even like daydreaming, but yeah. The next scene would be her withdrawing her foot from being touched. <laughs> <laughs> leave and me alone. The, yeah, leave me alone. <laughs> what is the red part? What is that? It's a door <laughs> or a shutter on a window or a shutter. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can see something. Mm -hmm. To me, maybe she it was a dream. You know, she saw Gabriel. It seems very dreamlike. And she's so precisely dry, and the angel is just floating. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, instead of that bright column of light, mm -hmm. um, and the first one, it's like this breath, like the swish of air from heaven. Yeah, so much movement from the angel, and so little movement. Mary, you know, contained. Yeah. Mary looks so really Mary looks so calm to me though. Like she's just kind of like chilling out, like happy, almost smiling, like pleased, I guess, almost, but 
but in a sort of unmoving sort of way, just kind of sitting and yeah. letting, letting it be. Accepting. I'm almost enjoying the moment. I don't know. Yeah. Like someone would be like just watching, you know, ducks on the lake or something like just oh. like, or what is watching nature, just like at peace and smiling. Hmm. Oh yeah, before we move on, we should see you. Do we also have any more comments? All right. So this one, I don't think about this one. Maybe you can turn this on. Lori, did or were you speaking to me, Lori? I, you just dropped out. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was. I, I was saying, tell us about this one. Yeah, this I um, found years ago, and I was writing my dissertation, and I have looked and looked for more information than I'm about to tell you, and I cannot find it. So this is what I know. This was made around 2010 by an Algerian artist who lives in Marseille, France. His name is Yazid Ulab, O-U-L-A-B. Um, it's quite large. It's hard to tell from, from this view, but it's um, 86 inches by 60 inches, right? So that's like seven feet by five feet. And it hangs in the Eric, Eric DuPont Gallery in Paris. And it was made by putting graphite on a drill. So he actually drilled this image. It's called Cosmic Core, C-O-R-E. And the only other thing I know about him is um, he was highly, is highly influenced in his art by the Sufi tradition, and in particular by whirling dervishes. And I think I see a lot of that influence here in the movement of this piece. Um, yeah, I can't wait to see, to hear what you have to say about it, all of you. Tell me what that means to drill. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. What does it mean to drill? They don't, they don't understand it. A drill, like a tool, like a like a piece of graphite on a drill, like a pencil on a drill that you like drilled in. Because it's graphite is whirling. When you so you touch the canvas, it'll spray out. Oh, okay. But you can draw with. Is this the crucifixion? Yeah. Amy, have you seen this in person? Never. I would love to see if there's texture from the I'm top. sure I imagine that there is. It feels gritty to me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I love the, his face. It's like there's the, that feels like the whirling dervish influence yeah. to me a lot. That kind of tilted sideways, still in the midst of all this movement. Oh. <clears throat> what intrigued me is the, the half or three quarter circle that's up against his forehead. Mm. Okay. And what that means. Oh, it's like a halo or something. Well, it's hanging. Well, maybe it is a halo. It seems to me that the longer you look at it, the more the image comes out to you. When I first looked at it, it just looked like kind of a lot of dots. And, but then as I look at it, it just kind of comes forth. I love the idea of thinking of it with regard to movement because um, the crucifixion is almost often seen as a static event. It happened. And this uh, suggests that there was movement that went on from the crucifixion to what we know. Heard. It's just. You have to be moved. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Pain. Mm -hmm. And your body will fight against that pain. It's your muscle. I must feel like the use of a drill amplifies that kind of mm. idea of like the pain. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, punishment. Mm -hmm. yeah. Perfect tools. Things like a, a magnet and little filings that just, just sort of were flung and they, they came out as the crucifix. I didn't notice the face at first and I thought it was just an angel. So it's interesting how it almost can have an opposite sort of uh, viewing of, you know, a sort of ecstatic, you know, arms outstretched flying. But then, you know, when I see the face and I, and I learn more about it and see Jesus hanging, it's like the opposite. Almost. But at the same time, I don't know, maybe that's kind of a crossing from one to the other. I love that. Was that Mike? I think I heard just speaking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I love that because I feel all of that too. And the title, remember, he did not choose to call it the crucifixion, right? It's called Cosmic Core. Uh, and to me, that just explodes everything yeah. open, just like the whole image explodes things open for me. That's interesting. Also with the the idea that tidal cosmic core and the, the way it's speckled so much almost makes it seem like it does it's transcendent of the body like it's not just a hard clear image of a physical form it shows like the more kind of amorphous larger uh, uh, self that's kind of taking up more space and more spread out and isn't just contained in this little sort of uh, prison of the body being punished. What, what I see with all of the spots around the body is radiation. Mm -hmm. What is radiating from Jesus? It's almost like a funnel too. Mm -hmm. And the more you look at it, the more the body is clearer. And the feminine shape. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I noticed that too. It's very feminine very shape. Feminine. Yeah. <clears throat> Both the body and the stance of the body. Very uterine like. Yeah. Wow. And when I go look that up and print it off. Yeah. yeah. That image for myself. She needs to text us the spelling of it because I can't pull up the artist. Yeah, would you text the spelling? Because people want to look it up. Did she hear you? Yeah, yeah. O U L A D. O U L A D. Ulad. What's his first name? Trapeze. Was it? First name? What's his first name, Amy? Yazid. Yazid. Y A Z I D. O U L A D. Yazid. Powerful images. Wow. Mm -hmm. And here is the last one, which we won't spend a lot of time on because we only have a minute or so. But um, this is from the St. John's Bible. So the Mary Magdalene community has that Bible, and you can actually look at this image um, there. Uh, this, is, this is the modern illuminated Bible. And so it's really a gem. And this is called the resurrection. So this is the moment when Mary and Jesus meet after, after the resurrection. And the little Hebrew title here means Rabboni, the teacher. And then what's not shown in this image is above their heads, there's um, the words, for I have not yet ascended. 
So here you see the red of Mary. Jesus isn't moving. You see her face. He's turned away. He's kind of um, kind of ethereal. Yeah. So there you go. Wow. Powerful. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Yes. So, my, so my vote is whenever we have a <laughs> spare Sunday that we our, our plans don't meet, that we get these people to do this. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I would love more, to. More art. It's, it's so fascinating. Yeah, it is an art. I would love to. Yeah. I, I really appreciate it. Good um, idea. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, things don't. Yeah. 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 I mean, they've actually certain artists. 